what are some of the best server-side ad insertion practices? Um, it's, it's a complicated set of, of, of interactions between multiple systems, and uh, it's important that it not go wrong because at least certainly in the case of linear, uh, once your ad avails are gone, they're gone. The inventory is, is you know, you'll never see it again. You have to just okay. keep it. We've run into the issue because we have so many different audiences on different devices uh, and different uh, advertisers that want to advertise on our, on our networks that um, we can't just take an SSAI approach. We have been, we actually support both client and server side depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. And we actually have some streams that do both interchangeably, which gets very interesting. And you tie that into, you know, live, like a, like a live uh, news broadcast. Um, you've all seen live news broadcasts just appear. They don't, uh, they don't listen for the ad pod to finish. So it's truly live. And so our, our ads, whether they're server side or client side, have to adapt to that. And that's, that was a big challenge in the early days, uh, working with uh, Darren and his group. Um, Were you building yeah, it? So Were you buying it? Were, you know, we we thought we could buy it because we thought it seemed really, uh, you know, everyone's showing ads, right? You watch the Super Bowl, you see ads, mm -hmm. but it turns out that's not truly live. In uh, they understand their their pod size. The other thing that uh, surprised me was finding out that for certain advertisers and certain programmatic ads, uh, because of the analytics we get back they pay a higher CPM for client side. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we're all proud rolling out this new platform that's all server side added ads and we have to turn half of it off because of the revenue. Okay. Very unexpected. And we're still running some of those today because we get a higher CPM. All right. All right. So well, it really depends. The money talks. Uh, Magnus, how about you? What, what were your comments on this area to gear? I, I would usually say that, that uh, for a service ad insertion, preparation is key. You need to prepare the content coming in with markers and everything like that. You need to have slates and fillers prepared in case of, of backup. You, you need to have uh, properly encoded ads coming in so you don't have a glitch in, in, in quality for the ads itself. If you're going live, I would say that uh, be prepared for high peaks. Everybody's asking for, right. for ads at the same time. so preload and header bidding and, and, and these type of techniques to, to flatten the curve, so to say. In, in these days, it's, it's pretty popular. So, But uh, I would say that uh, preloading and, and, and header bidding and, and preparation, be prepared because if it's a live event, a lot of viewers will, will press ads at the same time. It will mm -hmm. be high peaks for the system. So what you can do in preparation is usually what what's gains and, and, and gets quality in the end. It's very true that server-side ad insertion and just the ad ecosystem online is, is very, very complicated. Uh, so that, that leads to a couple of different challenges, right? I think when we talk about the CPMs, um, you know, today uh, server-side ad insertion really uh, supports uh, vast advertising and vast protocols. Uh, I think, you know, client-side still, um, you know, supports vPaid and some of the interactivity there. That's where you see some of the higher CPMs. Uh, but I think with some of the kind of advancements and protocols around VAS 4.0, some of the kind of open measurement standards, um, you know, some of the some of the things that are coming online there. I think we're starting to see a little bit of rebalancing of of those CPMs because you're starting to get more analytics um, from the server side. So that, that, that's certainly something to to think about. And and you ultimately also have to, you know, uh, understand the balance of of inventory in in your programmatic ad system or in your pre-sold ad system. If you only have vpaid ads and not vast ads, um, you know that that presents a challenge. So you have to also kind of look to your, to your ad partner there as well. Um, the second part of complexity you want to think about is, you know, in the television ecosystem, it's very controlled in terms of how ad breaks are scheduled, the ad exact durations of ads uh, inside of an ad pod uh, on the internet. And you know, when you, especially when you're going out to kind of open exchanges or programmatic exchanges, you know, if you request 30 seconds of ads, you don't off, always get exactly 30 seconds back. Sometimes you get 28, right. sometimes you get 32, and you have to have a flexible system that can say, you know what, I'm going to allow my ad break to go 30 seconds, and maybe my live stream is a little bit 
further behind live. So you can kind of flex your ad pods. You may make a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to chop the last ad, like right when we get to the 30 second break, I'm going to cut out of the ad no matter what and go back to live. Um, and that may affect, you know, your uh, completion rates and, and your revenue. And then you may also decide, you know what, if I get 32 seconds worth of ads, I'm just not going to show the last ad. I'm only going to do, uh, you know, 20 seconds of ad and then show 10 seconds of slate. So uh, it, it's a little more complicated. I think that that will become a little less complicated over time as the industry kind of uh, does some of the requirements for SSAI. Um, and ultimately, it's, it's about planning and understanding what's what's most important to you. Are you optimizing for revenue? Are you optimizing for latency? Are you optimizing for production quality? These are these are all the things you have to kind of consider when you're looking at uh, best practices for SSAI.